Well, good morning, everyone. Thomas Montgomery. We get together with our distribution partners and now our clients each morning or nearly every weekday morning, 8 o'clock central via Zoom. Talk about topics that are relative to strategies, tips, techniques, sharing success stories, and supporting each of you. We, are, we had a, a record-setting July, so July was wonderful, and, and I say this without exaggeration, we're almost now, only 11 days into August, almost matching our performance from the whole month of July. So thank you for all of you that are actively out helping improve the financial literacy of small business owners and getting them access to capital. It is working. The tweaks that we've made are, are just exceptional. Uh, we, we moved most of you over to the branch model that has allowed you to go out under your umbrella, your branding, marketing under your reputation. You're controlling the client's terms and conditions. So you determine agreements and, and what the clients are agreeing to. We provide all those services in, in the back office, right? So we, we're invisible to the client. We're supporting you. You're supporting the client. Most of you, not all, but most of you are generating about one client a day, pretty steady. And that's great. Some of you are doing much more. Uh, we, we have a, a couple of you that are doing closer to 10 a day. And then there's some of you that seems to be generating no clients. And that's bewildering because that's there's there's some problem. If you have a solution to what the problem is of most small businesses, and you're not able to execute. So we're going to drill into that a little bit today. So I'm on the credit and funding page. Hopefully the screen is shared. So this is on our website, but the credit and funding program is the primary resource that you and I take out to the marketplace. Assuming that you're getting the word out, so, so there's awareness, probably the biggest obstacle that you'll face, assuming that you're getting the word out, is disbelief. Oh, this sounds too good to be true. And that's actually an outstanding ob objection to receive because it is an opportunity to improve the financial literacy of the person or persons you're talking to. I'm going to help you understand how I describe that and then make sure that we're supporting you and how you would describe that. Because the, the credit and funding program of course, guarantees guarantees a minimum of $100,000 of funding for anyone that enrolls. When we applied for the grant and received the grant, that was the underlying premise, that we're good enough, legally and ethically, to take any file and improve it, legally and ethically, to be strong enough to qualify for at least $100,000. By doing that, that allows us to refund the setup fee to each participant. So essentially, they're getting all that help for free. Now, they are paying a deposit as a branch. They're paying you the deposit up front. Then we go do the work. We interface through you, and you interface with a client, and then they get the funding, and then they get the deposit or the setup fee back, kind of like a deposit with an apartment, right? You put the deposit down, you fulfill the lease, you get the deposit back. Here, they're paying you a setup fee when they enroll. You determine how much the setup fee is. On average, it's $2,000. It's up to you, though, right? So you can make it more, you can make it less. But there is a setup fee. Now, can it be financed? Absolutely. We can guarantee them financial approval. So regardless of, of how jacked up their situation is, they can get into the program. Now, what will if, if they want to finance the refundable setup fee, what will the terms be? Don't know that. We're not the lender. You're not the lender. So we, you and I, we're not the lender. We can help them get financing offers. They'll get at least one for sure. But you and I do not determine the interest rates of the payments of funding. But the client never is signing over a power of attorney. They're not, never. So the client always controls. Hey, do I like the terms and conditions of the financing? If yes, accept. If no, decline. So with that being said, the, the primary objection that we typically face is, oh, this is too good to be true. That is the opinion of someone that is financially illiterate, 
Either they don't know what we do in the program or they don't know how funding works. But that's okay. That's that's not a negative. When I say that, that's not an insult. That means that you and I need to step up and educate them. So same thing you and I learned. What, seventh grade, eighth grade? If you want a loan, what does it come down to? How do you qualify for loans? It's the three C's. So that's what you and I do. Now, now I'm going to address it at a high level and then we'll, we'll drill it down. But at a high level, that's what you and I do. We help people become qualified legally and ethically on paper to qualify for funding. And, and so then if, if the prospect or, or referral partner says, well, that's too good to be true or you can't do that, then we need to peel back another layer. And it's, it's depicted here on the page. That's why I'm using it as a reference. Well, what are the three C's? And again, if, if they were in attendance in, in most likely their seventh or eighth grade math class, they would have learned some of these key concepts. Maybe they were absent that day. I don't know. Maybe their school didn't teach it. But here, you and I need to step up and help them understand what does it take to qualify for funding? Because that's what we're bringing to the table right? These people want funding, they might need funding, but they don't qualify for it. What you and I do is we help them legally and ethically qualify for it. How does that happen? The three C's. So I want to spend a couple minutes drilling into the value proposition. So this is not only a discussion of what does the client get by going through the program, but it also is the answer of how is this possible that we can get anyone $100,000? You follow so far? All right, so we're gonna help them become qualified for funding by addressing their three Cs. Let's go ahead and talk about what the value proposition is. Now, if they're listening and of reasonable intelligence, once you've gone through the three Cs, they should sign up because they're gonna be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. It's like when Elon Musk announced he's going to fly to Mars. What did you you and I probably think? Oh, right. Oh, right. That, that, that's science fiction. That was in whatever. It was that a Matt Damon movie or whatever it was. That's too good to be true. That's a scam. You're not going to fly to Mars. I'll be damned. He's preparing to fly to Mars. So sometimes human nature is if we don't understand something or it's new information, the way that the human psyche can work is, well, I don't understand how that works. So... It's a scam. Elon Musk, you're a scam. Of course, that's not the case. So is it a scam to get people qualified for funding? Of course not, if you understand that it takes the three C's. So let's now drill into specifically what the client gets that makes this both effective and credible. You ready? So three C's, we're gonna help them improve their credit for free. So what happens is once the client has enrolled, one of the first things we're gonna do is do a soft credit pull. Doesn't impact their credit, didn't cost them anything, but it allows us to assess what's the baseline information. That's one of the first things that we do once a client has signed up through you as a branch office. Now, that soft pull is going to determine, would this client benefit from a credit sweep, which I'm going to talk about, and or a credit boost? What will happen is you and I will talk about that client's profile and create a plan based upon their objective data, their soft pull, to see what needs to be done to do what? To help them become qualified for funding, to get at least $100,000. So credit suite, credit suite is a legal FTC compliant, as it states here, way to remove or block applicable negative items. So let's get back to the, the formula. What does it take to have great credit? An absence of negative items and a presence of positive items. I, don't, I think that's irrefutable. I don't think anyone could argue that point. So that's frankly what we're doing, helping remove negative, and then credit boost is adding new primary trade lines. So that's how we address the first C. I'm going to pause for a moment because if this doesn't make sense to you, then you're probably not going to be able to explain it to a client and you're probably not going to be successful. So let's stop here with credit. Does this make sense? 
that anyone, because credit doesn't have a memory and credit is fluid. So can you and I, through the credit and funding program, help anyone improve their credit? Absolutely. How would you do that? Sounds too good to be true. Well, we're going to remove negative and if, if needed, and if needed, we're going to add positive. Okay, we all on the same page? So I, I think at this point, we'd all be saying, oh, okay, that makes sense. So that, then you might make the wrong inference. Oh, is that all it takes? So all we need to do, we could just send people to Lexington Law for credit repair. Well, no, because their approach is different. They do credit repair. We don't do credit repair. Ours is a more sophisticated approach, number one. And credit repair services, which we're not one, typically don't have the ability to add primary trade lines because it's a formula, right? The absence of negative and the presence of positive will result in a high credit score. So, but, and we're doing it for free. So now let's move on. So the question is, okay, well, if it's all about credit, fine. Is that all it takes? Of course not. Remember, we were talking about the three C's. We didn't say the one C, we said the three C's. So now let's switch over to the other side of the page here. One of the, th and th this is also, I don't want to say confusing because I don't think it's confusing, but it's often misunderstood. A lot of times clients don't understand this value proposition. So it's important that you explain it to them. For everyone that enrolls in the credit and funding program, including your clients through your branch, in addition to the credit, we're not on that right now. We're on collateral because they're getting all three of these things, but we're on collateral now. They receive a transfer of assets typically within 24 hours. I had a guy hang up on me yesterday because he's like, that's too good to be true. Well, that's ridiculous, right? He, he was so financially illiterate, I couldn't get him off of, of, of his misunderstanding. So from a collateral perspective, why does collateral matter if we're trying to get qualified for funding? Because that's the asset that we pledge, that the borrower pledges in case of lack of repayment to mitigate the risk of the lender. Makes sense, right? No, no surprise there. Well, if someone has what's called a collateral shortfall, in other words, they don't have enough collateral, well, how would we fix that? We literally transfer assets to them. So right now, if you wanted to give me some real estate you own, you could do that. I'm not asking you to do that. Now, could you just say, hey, hey, Tom, here's my 80 acres. It's yours. No, we'd have to transfer the deed. You could give me a car. You could give me the title to your 1969 Camaro SS and say, Tom, here's my muscle car. Well, unless we transferred the title, it's not really mine. But sure, you could do that. Here, we're not talking about land or, or automobile deals. We're going to transfer a different type of assets to every client, and we're going to transfer the title, the true ownership, because this has to be legal. It has to be compliant. This can't be some wink-wink uh, mis misunderstanding. So for every client that you enroll as a branch into your credit and funding program, they're going to be guaranteed the $100,000, and we're going to accomplish that by building their three Cs. We're going to address the credit, but now we're talking about collateral. So this is included in the value proposition. This isn't just some side conversation that you hope and pray will happen. We will provide every client, typically within 24 hours, one business day, assets, real assets. We're going to transfer the title to them. So they have collateral on their financials and they could go on their balance sheet of the business or the PFS of the business owner. So now they have, we've got a method, a mechanism to get them better credit. And then this is how the collateral occurs. It's not too good to be true. The, the only way that, that someone could infer that this is not legitimate, it's not ethical, that it's not effective is financial illiteracy. So that's why you need to be armed with the knowledge to understand how this works. I was talking to a client this morning, well, a prospective client this morning, and the analogy I use with him is chili, right? You don't just wish chili to come true. Now, of course, it's the middle of the summer, it's 100 degrees every day, so we probably don't want chili. But, but the point is, you don't just 
want and wish and demand chili. You're going to have to get the ingredients and make the chili. That's what you and I are doing. We're making the chili. We're, we're adding the beans. And I know there's different ways to make chili. We're adding the beef and so forth, so forth. Now, the third C, which we didn't get to yet, and then I'll open up for a conversation, is capacity. Well, why does this matter, right? Why should that matter? You and I would be wasting our time to debate reality. So, frankly, it doesn't matter what you think, and it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what lenders think and what lenders require for approval. Now, true, Different lenders have different underwriting standards and different types of funding have different requirements. I understand that. But your opinion honestly doesn't matter. And my opinion doesn't matter. These are the three C's, right? Think back to seventh grade, three C's. So we need credit demonstrates to the lender that we've paid our bills the way that we promised that they have a reasonable assurance of being paid back. It's crazy to me we'll have sometimes people come to us with the worst credit, horrible credit. And again, they're welcome to participate. That's fine. And our guarantee remains. But, but they'll be, they'll apply the most scrutiny. And it's like, dude, man, you've not been paying any of your bills the way you've promised, right? And, and you think that you're ready right now to go get your million dollars, right? So credit is, is our reputation of paying bills on time. And the way that we accomplish that is by removing negative, if needed, and applying positive. Collateral is demonstrating to the lender that we have assets to pledge that in case of failure to repay, they can mitigate the risk. So we're on capacity. Now, capacity is the demonstration that we can afford the loan, right? Can we afford to pay it back? So sometimes it's interesting if you're struggling with a prospect and you can't seem to close them which is very easy. We've had different trainings on closing, but you could ask them, well, how big of a payment do you want to have? Because it causes them to think, you know, I've got to pay this back, don't I? Well, sure. Borrowing money to start or grow a business is called leverage. It's smart. Most successful entrepreneurs do it. It's not the same as taking on consumer debt. What we're doing is, is growing a business that'll pay um, spit off profits in the future. But we have to show, well, I shouldn't say we have to. In many cases, we need to show that we can afford it. Now, we talked about recently, as of August 1st, that the SBA has changed their lending standards. And what they're saying now versus before is that if we can show in the future we could afford it, we can check that box. Where before August 1st, we had to show historical financials that we could afford it. Huge difference, much easier to get an SBA loan now than it was before August 1st. And we've had a number of trainings about how you and I can help. Oh, oh, well, someone wants to get an SBA loan. What do they do? They enroll in the credit and funding program through your branch. So the credit and funding is the umbrella that's providing this scope of services. And then we'll work with them to identify the right type or types of funding based upon their mitigating circumstances. So what's my point? If they're chasing after an SBA loan, this is the program. If they definitely don't want an SBA loan, this is the program. So where the funding comes from will get flushed through as we're building out the, the funding plan and the process will always get the client's buy-in on, on the game plan. But regardless, don't focus on, oh, well, he needs money for real estate or he needs money to buy a dump truck or he needs money to start a casino. The uses of funds doesn't change the fact that this is the platform that you and I take out to the marketplace. Now, will those details matter as we're building out the loan package? Of course, but it, this is the starting point. So don't get hung up. Clients often will love to talk and you've got to manage your time. I know I'll have prospects contact us and, and, and they'll want to spend 15 to 30 minutes telling me about their widget and how it's great and how it's different and their life story. That doesn't matter, right? They need to, and it, you know, we want to be cordial, but what matters is, are you a good fit for the credit and funding program? From there, we can build out the loan profile. Well, what would make someone a good fit? Well, do you want a minimum of 100000 And would you like us to assist you 
in qualifying for funding by improving your three seats. If that's the case, then let's get started. Let's go ahead and just talk about that for a moment. How do you get someone started? Well, I would recommend that you have a link to your agreement. So as a branch, the contract's between you and them, right? We're not a party to the agreement. So you should have a link and you can text them the link while you're on the phone with them. You send them the link and then you walk them through the enrollment process. About 90% of people, I would suspect, project, expect, will sign up if you do that. Now, can you circumvent that? Can you just blast your agreement out to a million people? No, you could, just wouldn't recommend it. They typically want to talk to you first. And so I would be on the phone with them. I would text them your link so they have the ability to e-sign your agreement. Your agreement is the enrollment into the credit and funding program with your branch, your branding, your pricing, your terms and conditions. They sign that. After they sign that, then they need to be invoiced for the refundable setup fee, which you determine how much that is. Commonly, most of you are doing 2000 So you invoice them for that. I, I would suspect about half the people will say, okay, great, I'll pay the invoice. I see the value proposition. Others will say, I don't want to pay it. I can't afford it. I need to finance it. And then that's fine. Then we can get a funding proposal from them, uh, an app, I should say. And then we can look for funding for them for the refundable setup fee. But we, we don't go look for money for the client until they're under contract. Now, you might say, well, that sounds risky to the client. What if they don't get any offers? Everyone will get at least one offer. Often they'll get many funding offers, but everyone will get at least one funding offer to cover the refundable setup fee. So there's no risk to them. We have a, a micro lender, a 501c3, you're not 501c3 nonprofit. That is a safety net lender that will finance that refundable setup fee for any enrolled client if they don't get other approvals. Now, we're gonna take them to other approvals first, but uh, look for other approvals, but we can at least get that finance. So that's the process. With that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to you all. I wanna know what questions that you have, what are you facing? What's keeping you from closing deals on the credit and funding program? And then Andre has a first question. Can she invite people to these morning trainings? Sure, we, we, we make this training available to the general public. Uh, we, we've had the FTC on it. We've had uh, friends and foes. We've had people that love us, people that hate us. Everyone is welcome to this training. And in almost every instance, there's a rare exception, but in almost every instance, we record it, we convert it into YouTube format, and we put it up on our YouTube channel for the world to see. So you can share access live and, and or the recordings. Yes, ma'am. But my primary goal today is making sure that each of you are equipped to enroll clients, right? Because if you're not enrolling clients, you're not helping clients and you're not making money, right? How much money do you make as a branch? Well, typically, most of you are charging a $2,000 refundable setup fee. So you're getting paid $2,000 up front today. And then most of you are charging a 10% performance fee. The client pays after the capital raise. So most of you are making right at $12,000 per client. Now, you can make more or less based upon how you want to set up your contracts. So there's a great value proposition to the client that they're getting. And there's a great economic incentive for you. So if you're not enrolling, I, I would say this, if you're not enrolling at least one client a day, we need to figure out why, what, what's the problem? What, what is not happening? Do you not have leads? Then let us know. We have a free leads program. We're inundating. We've had several of you come back and say, no more leads. We're giving them so many free leads, people that are coming to our website that's looking for funding. Some of them say, turn me off for leads. I got more than I can handle. If you're not receiving leads, you need to let us know because that probably means that we didn't know that you were ready. Ready means, uh, do you are you signed up as a branch? Have you set up your client agreement? Are you open for business? But if you need leads, we've got leads. We need help with leads. All right. And, and of course, if you need to reach us at support, at email support at guaranteedfunding.org. 
you could also call us or text us, but we're really busy, which is great. Not too busy for you, not too busy for clients, but we're really busy. Things are going well. Enrolling 100 to 150 clients most days this week. It's going really, really well. Uh, we're here to help. And clients are getting funding. Uh, Mr. Barchi's on the line. One of his clients just got 71000 And so he just got paid, I don't know, I think Wednesday for the capital raise off of that. Uh, I'm assuming it was 10%. 10% of 71000 so he made $7,000. $100, I think it was, uh, commission. So yes, clients are enrolling. Yes, we do what we promise to do. Yes, clients are getting funded. If you're not partaking in that economic engine, something's wrong and you need to let us know what we can do to, to help address it. Okay, who has questions, comments, concerns? Because this, this is a great opportunity to make money for yourself and help other people. It's not like winning the lottery, right? It's not getting a billion dollars wired over to your account. But if an extra 12,000 a day that's, that's going into your business is worth a little bit of your time, then I really encourage you to, to engage. There's just a great opportunity here. We're here to train and support. Who has questions, comments, concerns? Susan's asking about Madison. So Madison has been working with us part-time. She starts full-time on Monday. So that would be the 14th. So Madison's great. She is a, she's one of our customer success managers. She'll be full-time W2 as of Monday. So she's been part-time uh, up until now. Uh, for clients that come in directly, not through branch, Madison is their interface. So Madison is kind of doing the same thing that you're doing. So what you do for your branch clients is what Madison does for our direct clients. But uh, thank you for asking about that. And we're continuing to expand. We're actually getting quotes right now to buy a modular building to put out front to have more office space to hire more staff. Things are going really well. But with the branch model, that alleviates some of our or growth pains because as a branch, you're the one interfacing with the clients. Who has questions, comments, concerns? Timothy's asking about workshops. So yes, like I was traveling yesterday, we were doing a workshop in uh, Sherman, Texas. So yes, uh, certainly gathering people together to either um, pitch them, if you will, to educate them about enrolling is, is something that some of you are doing and we can support you on that. I heard, I don't know this for sure, and Oscar is not on the training live. I heard that Oscar is going to start doing daily trainings each day for the next 60 days. That's awesome. So some of you like to get in front of people and educate them at libraries or churches or what have you. Certainly you could do that. You don't have to do that. But uh, Financial literacy is key. Most people don't understand what it takes to get funding. They just want funding. They just need funding. But what do you and I know? You have to qualify for funding. And that's the secret sauce. That's what you and I do. We help them improve their credit, capacity, collateral. I was talking to a gentleman yesterday trying to when I was traveling to that workshop. Now, uh, lost connection like three or four times but he i believe he's going to be coming on as a branch and he has 80 80 80 sales reps he sees this as the best thing since sliced bread now we'll see what happens with that but we're attracting not just individuals like you all who, who are awesome professionals but we're now starting to attract sales organizations and say, yeah, I want a piece of this, right? Because they're not making 12,000 per client on their current offerings. They, they do things like merchant cash advances and sell insurance and things like that, which is valuable. I'm not uh, minimizing that, but when they can turn around and make 12,000 a client and we can help anyone get these results, uh, it's attracting some big hitters. All right. Anyone have any questions, comments, concerns? Uh, Andrea says her contract is ready. Awesome. She's uploaded to JotForm. Some of you are using JotForm. It's an alternative to Adobe or DocuSign or FormStack. That's fine. And uh, she's working on getting that set up. Yeah. So you want to get the technical side set up so you're open for business. And once you are, let us know, and then we can definitely plug you into the lead flow. I know, again, Mr. Barchi's online. 
I suspect in the past 24 hours, we've sent Mr. Barchi, I'm guessing a bit, five hot leads. Five people have come to us and frankly filled out this form wanting information. And, and so Mr. Barchi, I believe, has received five. Uh, Lon's on here. Lon, you've received probably three to five. So anyone that's not in the lead flow that you want hot, and when I say hot, we, we've not pre-qualified them. We have one branch, she's up in Canada. She's a doctor actually. And, and she was a bit critical. You know, did, did we pre-qualify these leads? The truth is no, these are people that came to our website. They filled out this exact form. And then we forward them on to each of you that want hot leads. But no, I mean, maybe they give a bad name. I don't know. Maybe they give a bad email or phone in general. That's not the case where most of those folks are enrolling, but we can certainly get you in the lead flow. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. We'll see you back Monday. And as far as I know, we'll be on a full five-day schedule next week. Thanks, everyone. Let us know what we can do to help you. Bye-bye.